Today, I'm gonna try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fire Red with only Poison-type Pokemon, but with an additional twist. Poison-types were incredibly common back in Kanto, but didn't see much popularity in competitive use due to the overpowered Psychic-type back in the day. With Psychic having been nerfed since, I suspect that Poison will have made a comeback and will have a reasonable shot at this with tons of awesome encounters, although there are a few caveats that we'll meet along the way. In addition, if we can make it to the Pokemon League, there's going to be a wicked bonus challenge element so buckle in. Let's see if we can beat Pokemon Fire Red with only the first poison type that we find on each route, no items in battle, level caps in place, and the battle mode on set at all times. And when it comes to bonuses and challenge elements, there is perhaps no greater game than today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, a free-to-play RPG for both mobile and PC with wicked strategic battles and numerous modes of gameplay. With frequent updates, this game has one of the most impressive depths of sheer content that I've ever seen. And speaking of content, as Pokemon fans, I'm sure you'll appreciate that there are over 700 awesome champions for you to collect. Doing a poison type Pokemon video has me thinking, what champions would I invite over for a dinner party? Not because I'm gonna poison them, but my cooking is just that bad. Sir Nicholas is my number one choice as I have a funny feeling he'll bring gifts and knows how to hunt for our food. How about Arbiter, Goddess of Light, because, well, electricity's too expensive these days. Crew Traxa, because as scary as she is, she's said to rule over a kingdom of fire, so heating our food should be an easy task. And, well, cutting it up, too. Finally, I'm gonna bring Rhonda along, as I feel we could all use a way to burn off a massive feast, and a martial arts lesson is the perfect way to do so. Ray's fourth anniversary is finally here, with lots of excitement including dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event where you can get an anniversary-themed legendary champion. You'll also be able to take a trip down memory lane with a recap video of your stats in Raid, and for Amazon Prime members who just got Genbo, keep an eye out for the next drop with some powerful, savage gear from March 2nd to the 30th. But there's more. New players, use my link or scan the QR code right here and get a free starter pack with this cool in-game loot. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the run. Alright, here we go, Pokemon Fire Red, and hey, well this seems rather thematically appropriate. Two poison types going at it. It's so damn cool that Pokemon Masters basically confirmed that this battle was between Oak and Agatha. Oh, and excuse me for casually sidestepping the fact that these Pokemon remakes came out 20 years ago? You just can't wait for me to die, can you? Man, they really don't stop with the poison theme, do they? Oak's even representing the type with his fit. Right, all boys leave home someday. Yeah, I think I'll be going for like three years or so. I'm looking for a cold climate at high altitude. It's time to pick our starter, and naturally, we're gonna go for the best one, Bulbasaur, who ends up being female actually, a 12% chance, so I name her Shirley. Being unable to wait for even a single minute, our rival Blue challenges us to battle, and honestly, I'm a bit scared for this one as he has Charmander. You've never had a Pokemon battle before, have you? Nope, never. Never in my life. The back and forth tackle and scratch battle was looking like we might lose it to be honest, but eventually we got a crit, meaning we ended him with just 4 HP remaining on our side. Close one. Technology is incredible! You can now store and recall items in Pokemon as data via PC. Yeah, you can also track everyone on Earth using devices that they willingly carry around and also have AI write your term papers. What a world. Checking Shirley out, it turns out she has a relaxed nature which gives her plus defense and minus speed stats. Not great, as a future Venusaur could use the extra speed. Moving onward, we get to Route 22, and I find it very cool how you reach the Pokemon League gate before you even hit up the first gym, but there's an optional blue battle if we progress here, so I'm gonna avoid that at all costs. Hey, wait old man, don't you dare catch that! I need one of- th Oh, you son of a- up ahead in Viridian Forest, we can grab a new encounter, and in here we can find... a Weedle, which I catch and nickname Avery. Avery ends up having a Rash plus special attack and minus special defense nature. Bleh, not great at all, but we'll take it. As is characteristic of bugs, Avery quickly evolves into a Kakuna before we exit the forest, adding some more bulk to our team. With that, we arrive in the first gym location, Pewter City, and man oh man is this ever nostalgia overload. At level 10, we can already fully evolve a Pokemon of ours as Avery evolves into a B drill, although I suspect she won't be very useful for the first gym. Speaking of which, the first gym leader is Brock, the Rock-type specialist, and we have a perfect answer for him, don't we? Oh, damn it. I'm an idiot. I accidentally sent out Beedrill first. Great. 
Regardless, a switch into Shirley didn't hurt us too much, and as might be expected, a 4 times super effective same type attack bonus Vine Whip decimates both his Geodude and Onyx to give us a very hard fought victory and our first badge. I definitely think this will be one of those runs that gets harder and harder as it goes on, but I'll take an easy start for sure. Next up on Route 3, we can find a great hidden item, an Orin Berry, and berries are very hard to come by in these games, so we're going to be grateful for the scraps. Not only that, but on this route, we can also find our next encounter, a Nidoran male, which is vastly more common than the females in Fire Red, which I nicknamed Ricky. Ricky has a lonely plus attack and minus defense nature, and I'll definitely take that plus attack since poison is a physical type back in Gen 3. More nostalgia is ahead as we arrive in Mount Moon. Although, in this case, I suppose it's closer to PTSD. Anyone want to take a wild guess what encounter we can find in here? Yup, that's right, a Zubad, which I nicknamed Deville, and who has a quirky neutral nature. There is a very weird thing in these games with regard to Zubat's evolutionary line, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Now, what I wasn't expecting was a huge challenge from a trainer with our arch nemesis, a Steel-type Magnemite, this early on. Literally the only Steel-type in the early game, and with a Poison team, he caused some trouble, but Leech Seed definitely came in clutch. Along the way, we find another crucial item, a Moonstone to trigger a future evolution. In the basement, we can get a Wicked TM2, the Thief TM, great for getting type-boosting items, items off wild Pokemon, and how fitting it is that they put it here of all places. What are you looking at? Now a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually grab a second Moonstone here. It's a hidden one, but it's going to be very necessary if we're to eventually fully evolve all our encounters. After getting to level 16, Shirley attempts to evolve, but I'm going to actually delay the evolution now for a particular reason. Leaving Mount Moon brings us to Route 4, and crazily enough, yet another encounter is available to us here, this time an Ekans, and as I hoped, it does indeed have the Intimidate ability. Not only that, but it ends up having a Jolly Nature, giving him plus speed and minus special attack. Absolutely perfect. Let's go! I name him Brett, and I'm really hoping we can change the stigma around Arbok in this run. That would give me a lot of joy. A quick jog brings us to the next gym destination, Cerulean City. As if our team wasn't wild enough for this early on in game, we can now evolve Ricky into a Nidorino at level 16, which gives us quite a stat boost. Slowbro, use Sonic Boom! Come on, Slowbro, pay attention! I... wait a minute. Yeah, just as I thought, there's no possible way for Slowbro to even learn Sonic Boom. This is straight up Pokemon abuse. Someone call PETA. Who hurt you? Right in front of the Nugget Bridge, we have what is often a terrifying battle against our rival, Blue, and if I'm honest, even with this team, I'm not sure we're ready. It was a tough decision as we lose out on Horn Attack this way, but I'm going to use our Moonstone to fully evolve Ricky into a monster Nido King. It should be illegal to have this thing so early on in the game, but it might be necessary. Alright, you sick f Let's do this. Blue leads with a Pidgeotto, whose sand attack has ended many runs in the past, and I lead with Ricky. Double kick hits him for about a third, and he uses sand attack. Ugh. Regardless, we hit another down to the red, and then he lands a gust for not much damage at all. He then hits a priority quick attack before we can finish him off with a final attack. In comes Abra next, and thankfully this thing gives us a bit of a break as it only has teleport. So looking at the rest of his team, I take the opportunity to switch in Deville, then go back into Ricky to get rid of our accuracy drop. Perfect! as I now nail him with two packs to KO. In comes Rattata next, and super effective double kick eviscerates him immediately. Then, his final Pokemon comes in, Charmander, and double kick hit him right to half, and then he hits an Ember, and thankfully no burn, so a final attack finishes him off. Alrighty then, Ricky, you made that much more manageable than I was expecting. Immediately following the Nugget Bridge Trainer Marathon is Route 24, where we can actually get a new encounter, this time, an Oddish, which I nicknamed Dawn and who has a rash plus special attack and minus special defense nature. Not bad at all, and a great catch for the next gym. After learning Razor Leaf by level up, I now allow Shirley to evolve into an Ivysaur, definitely one of the coolest middle stage Pokemon. Not only that, but after some training, Doll also evolves into 
a gloom, helping me feel much better about the next gym. That's right, the Cerulean Gym is led by Misty, the water trainer, and wait a minute, why did they put a trainer behind the gym leader? Aren't you supposed to... Okay, never mind. Now, even with two middle stage grass types, you can never really feel safe against Misty, as Confusion with Water Pulse is the name of the game here, in addition to her recover. She leads with her Staryu as I send out Doll. Thankfully, we have a recovery move in Absorb, which does a huge amount of damage after she just hardened. On the next turn, she hits a Water Pulse, but no confusion, so another hit takes her down. In comes her ace though, Starmie, quite a beast for the second gym. Swift doesn't do much on us though, and we got a crit immediately with Absorb. Nice. Another round of this brings her to a sliver though, meaning she then heals with a Super Potion. I'm grateful she's not using Water Pulse at least, and in the end, Doll is able to wear her down with the Absorb recovery helping, winning us our second badge. Cool thing is, I had even put the one person berry you can get until now on, so we could have snapped out a confusion anyway. Pretty solid. Moving on, we... oh my. This looks like my bedroom after a raccoon breaks in. What'd you think I was gonna say? The Rocket Grunt here actually posed more of a challenge than I was expecting with a damn drowsy of all things, but Brett saved the day with Bite not only being super effective, but getting a flinch in the nick of time. An important win too is we can get the great Dig TM from him too. Okay, this girl wants to trade a female Nidoran for a male Nidoran, and well, that's just not helpful, is it? In no time, Vermilion City is upon us where the next gym is, and hitting up the Pokemon fan club, I realized this is like the first time in the franchise that Seal got love. It feels almost weird seeing it, to be honest. Well, except for that one time that they featured Dugong in an animated Sword and Shield series when you couldn't even get one in the damn games. Why you always lying? At this point, something occurred to me. Diglett's cave is incredibly dangerous. Yes, we could repel our way through, but don't forget that repel only prevents Pokemon below your level spawning, which means, yup, the crazy level 29 Dugtrios still spawn with the arena trap ability so you can't escape. These things could literally sweep our entire team, but thank god for critical hit Razor Leafs, am I right? Hijacking a nearby ship, we can grab the Brick Break TM, which should come in handy, and along the way, we have a great evolution as the veal evolves into a Golbat. Now, I'm going to be very clear here, as I had a bunch of people complaining that I didn't evolve Golbat in one of our past Fire Red runs, the game literally does not allow you to evolve Pokemon that have next generation evolutions until the post game. It will actually prompt you to evolve every damn level, but then it cancels itself. Incredibly annoying. But something less annoying is that Brett also evolves into an Arbok. Can't wait to put this thing to use. Speaking of which, it's time for another rival battle with Blue, with his team growing ever stronger and with a big danger this time around. He leads with Pidgeotto again, and I lead with Brett this time around to hit him with that Intimidate right off the bat. I then outspeed with Bite, but he lands a Sand Attack. Another Bite gets a crit to hit him low and gets the flinch so we can take him down on the next. All right, Brett's a monster. It's settled. In comes a huge threat next though, Kadabra, but we're in the best position we can possibly be in with Bite, but we miss, and then he goes for Disable. Huh, that is not good. I'm forced to switch, so I go for Deville as he lands a confusion of all things, but we tank it on just over half. He then outspeeds with another, and we survive on just 9 HP before hitting a bite that doesn't quite KO. Uh-oh. I have to send in our next bulkiest Mon here, so I send in Shirley, and she tanks one on just over half as well, and thankfully we didn't have to risk the crit anyway, as he went for Disable so we could finish him off with a Razor Leaf. Sheesh, that was close. In comes Charmeleon next, and we have a great answer in Ricky who can duke it out with him. Ember versus Double Kick, and since we didn't get burned, we emerged the victor, although we did get growled in the process. His final Pokemon is Raticate though, so with the super effectiveness, we still have a good option, as Double Kick nails him for the one hit KO. Or would that technically be a two hit KO, I guess? Who knows? Point is, we won and can save the puking captain. <laughs> that win grants us access to the Vermilion City Gym, which I'm not gonna lie is complete hell on earth with all these damn random trash can switches. Whoever designed this is a sadist of the highest order. I've wasted hours of my life on this. Getting to the third gym leader eventually happened though, Lieutenant Surge, the electric type specialist. Normally we have a bit of trouble here, but this time we have a perfect answer in Ricky, not only being immune to their electric attacking moves and Thunder Wave of course, but I also taught him the Dig TM, so I kid you not, 
he just mowed through all three of his Pokemon with ease. Literally all they could do was tackle, quick attack, or double team, so there was really no hope on his end, although in all fairness we did get paralyzed with static, which is not ideal for a two turn move. Heading east, we can pick up the Aerial Ice TM, might be better for Golbat than Wing Attack since it can't miss. Hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? No, no, we're not going there. Making our way through the rock tunnel, we, well, what do you want me to say here? I can't see sh I don't know where I am, I can't see anything, what is reality? Okay, in all seriousness, we can find something cool in here. The Rock Slide Tutor, who I have teach it to Brett for great coverage. Not only that, but down south in the Route 12 gate, we can also get the Return TM for a great 102 powered normal move. Arriving in Lavender Town, one of the most cursed places in all of Pokemon, we can make our way through the Pokemon Tower, eventually being stopped by Blue for another battle. I think it was precisely this moment that I let my overconfidence get to me. Against his Pidgeotto, I'm like, okay, we've got an Intimidate Pokemon with super effective Rock Slide now, but we missed our first one, then got hit by Sand Attack, then a Quick Attack before we land one, but he barely survived in the red too. We then proceeded to miss another Rock Slide and a Bite before landing one to finish him off, taking a third damage in the process. In comes Execute next, another Psychic type, great, as we land a Bite, and thankfully he misses Hypnosis, so another does him in. Then, in comes Kadabra, and we get another hit off, but it doesn't quite KO and doesn't flinch either, so he lands a Confusion, and we survive on just 9 HP in the red before our berry. Sheesh. I have to switch, so I go into Doll, but Confusion does over half on the switch. Oh no, not good! I go into Shirley now, and he hits us just 1 HP below half, but our Ornberry takes us back above, allowing us to just barely survive another on 7 HP and hit a Razor Leaf to finish him. Oh man. In comes Charmeleon next, and Ricky is a better answer than ever this time, with Dig being able to tank an Ember with ease and respond with a stab super effective move, but he survives on what must be like 1 HP and uses a Growl to lower our attack before a Peck takes him down. Then, in comes something I completely forgot he even had at this point, an Intimidate Gyarados, meaning we're out here with a minus 2 attack Pokemon. I try to just poison him with Poison Sting, but we don't get it and a Thrash smashes us below half. Goodness gracious. At this point, we only have two Pokemon with good health, so I don't have much of a choice. I send in Deveal, and Thrash hits us for a third. I know he'll get confused on the next one, so I go for a wing attack for a third before he hits to 15 HP and gets confused. Avery Arbidrill is far too weak defensively to tank attacks from this thing, so I take a risk and switch in Ricky, and he hits himself in confusion. Yes! I then go for Peck just for damage, but he breaks through and slams us to just 11 HP. At this point, there's only one choice left. Avery, who I switch in, and Thrash hits, and gets a crit to instantly demolish her. Are you kidding me? We could have survived one otherwise and could have made that work with confusion, but ouch. Well, I take the opportunity to now send in Brett for the Intimidate, and thank god we land the rock slide to take him down. That was terrifying. Our entire team was hurt badly from that. No more playing around. Unfortunately, we can't pick up our next encounter in here without the Silph Scope, which is made by my company after all, so why can't I get one? Well, after all that, we at least arrive in Celadon City, which has a whole host of amazing things in store for us. Like, for instance, one of the most forgotten places in the franchise, this random hotel that serves no function whatsoever. I'm on vacation with my brother and my boyfriend. Celadon is such a pretty city. Why? Why did she bring her brother? <laughs> Nothing like getting C-blocked by your brother-in-law, am I right? In the department store, we can grab a wicked item, the Leaf Stone, but I'm gonna wait a bit to evolve Gloom after getting a certain level up move. We can also grab some great TMs of moves that we've already picked up, like Dig and Brick Break. Great, since they're not multi-use back in this gen. Exploring the Rocket Game Corner hideout, we can grab the Black Glasses to boost our Dark-type moves, and at the end, we find Daddy Giovanni, the boss who challenges us to battle. He leads with an Onyx, and I notice that Ricky has great coverage against his team, so I lead with him. Onyx cannot do much against us and was just a nuisance with Harden, so a dig followed by a double kick with Poison Point activating did him in. 
The same went for his Rhyhorn too, who couldn't even get a Fury attack off, the poor thing. Then, in comes his final Pokémon, quite a beast, Kangaskhan. Mega Punch hits, and does huge damage to bring us to just 30 HP before a crit double kick brings him to half. Oh my. Here, I switch in Brett for the Emergency Intimidate, then he goes for Tail Whip. I decide to hit him with Bite, which does, like, nothing, and thankfully he misses Mega Punch. Realizing how big of a threat this thing is, I go for Glare to paralyze him, then switch in Doll as our defense is being lowered way too much. He stays paralyzed, so from there, Doll is able to land one Acid before getting put into crit range. I switch in Brett again for the double Intimidate and defense reset, so now I can nail him with two Rock Slides for the W. Whew. Going ahead to the west a bit and sneaking behind the gate has us find the house where we can get the Fly HM, which apparently Deville can't learn. What is that nonsense? <laughs> this gym is great. It's full of women. Oh, it's so refreshing to see that even back in 2003 we had believers in equality of opportunity. Great to see. As I'm sure you can imagine, we have a perfect answer for the fourth gym leader, Erica, who- Lovely weather, isn't it? I j What? We're indoors, Erica. In theory, she's a grass gym leader, but don't forget that almost all grass types back then were part poison too. Deville, however, resists everything they can throw at us, only being able to be annoyed by paralysis for the most part, and then spamming wing attack has us break through her victory bell, tangela, and vile plumes defenses, only being brought to two thirds in the process. Finally, we catch a bit of a break, and also get the Giga Drain TM for winning, fantastic for one of our grass types. With the Sylph Scope in hand, we can now hit up the Pokemon Tower again for a new encounter, this time, a Ghastly, which I catch and nickname Richie, and who ends up having a docile, neutral nature. Now, a few Future Gengar is kind of weird in this generation, as he's a special attacker, but both Ghost and Poison are physical in this gen. But there are other strats that I have in mind. In no time, Richie evolves into a Haunter and learns Shadow Punch, quite a beastly middle-stage Pokémon, offensively at least. Not only that, but we can also finally figure out the identity of that damn Ghost at the top of the tower, and of course, it just has to be a wickedly powerful Ground-type, doesn't it? Long story short, this thing smashed us with Bone Meringue down to just 2 HP before we could take it down. Holy, that was close. Very glad to have put that thing out of its misery for the second time. After waking up a rampaging Snorlax, we have a beast versus beast showdown between it and Ricky, and teaching him Brick Break turns out to have been a great idea, as we end up not taking any damage at all. Ricky is the top dog, and we get some leftovers to show for it by using the item finder afterwards. A journey down Cycling Road brings us to the next gym location, Fuchsia City, but before that I head to the east to Route 15 to catch our next encounter, as I don't want it messing up our Safari Zone encounter, a Venonat. I'm gonna box him for now as we've already got a full team. The Safari Zone is where our next encounter is to be found, and after a bit of searching we find it, a neat arena. So I decide to throw some food at it. That's bait. And it proceeds to flee instantly. Well, f that was our last chance to get anything in the female Nidoran line, so... ouch. At least we get to pick up the Surf HM after all that, which will be very helpful for a later encounter. While training up for the next gym, we have some awesome team upgrades at least, as Shirley evolves into a Venusaur, probably my favorite fully evolved starter Pokémon of all time. Not only that, but Doll also evolves into a Vileplume, giving us even more bulk, which is something that we've kind of lacked until now. With that, it's time for the Fuchsia City Gym, and although it's a poison gym, nearly all the trainers in here have a bunch of psychic Pokémon, so... I was very careful to dodge the ones with Hypno that have psychic, as that would have ruined us. And ultimately, our dark moves combined with Shirley's bulk helped us pull through things like Drowsy. The fifth gym leader is Koga, and since both him and the next gym leader have the same level cap, we're forced to go in a bit underleveled. He is our poison type arch nemesis, and his team is actually incredibly bulky and super annoying too with things like minimize. With that said, none of our Pokemon can get poisoned, which he usually uses as his other gimmick, but we also don't have any type coverage against him. So essentially what I did was send Shirley out to sleep powder his coughing, set up leech seed just in case, and then start stacking up growth to raise our special attack. That way we're able to do some sort of damage with Razor Leaf, but in the end, my greatest fear happened as he woke up the last minute and nailed us with a self-destruct of all things down to 30 HP. Luckily, I had put a Citrus Berry on and in comes Mach with us at half. Knowing this thing will minimize like crazy, I land a Leech Seed right away to prevent any shenanigans and guarantee both damage and recovery. Combined with putting him to sleep, we were able to raise the leaf him steadily into Oblivion and ended up at full health in the end even through him healing. 
His next coughing was then a one-hit KO with maxed out special attack, and we unfortunately missed Leech Seed on his wheezing when it came in, and kept getting hit relatively hard by Sludge, including a damn critical hit that brought us into the red out of nowhere. I had to switch here, so I went into Doll. Even he kept missing though, and Sludge was hitting hard, so I switched into Ricky. Unfortunately, since he has Levitate, we couldn't use Dig, but with the help of Leech Seed Recovery, I could repeatedly Brick Break him, hoping for the defense drops, and since his best move against us is Tackle, he could hardly do a thing, and we ended up taking him down in the end. A wild battle, but kind of to be expected from a bulky, same-type team. Oh man, I missed your crazy gibberish, old man. You give me those dentures back! In the house beside the Wardens, we can pick up a key item, literally, the Super Rod, which we'll need for our next encounter. Going back to Route 10 with Surf in Hand now, we can ride a horsey somehow to find a tentacool. Amazing. I catch it successfully and name him Eric, and Eric has a brave plus attack and minus speed nature, which isn't so great, but the water typing might be huge for us, so I replace Doll for now. The encounters don't end yet though, as we can head back to Celadon City for our next one. Sounds weird, I know, but it ends up being in this small little pond in front of this dude's house. It is a 1% encounter chance, but miraculously, I found it on my third one. A coughing, who I nicknamed Matt, and who has an impish nature, plus defense, and minus special attack. Beautiful. I couldn't have asked for anything better. Some more team upgrades are on the way though, as Eric evolves into a Tentacruel, who should do a great job replacing Doll's bulk. Not only that, but I also trade evolved Richie into a Gengar, who I think will be our last hope for our next gym challenge. So naturally, I EV train him like an insane person. Before anything though, these fools over here try taking over my building, so it's time to do business. Brett served as the perfect counter for all the rocket grunts, as Intimidate combined with ground, dark, and rock coverage handled all of their poison types, and even their flying ones like Zubat and Golbat. Near the end, we have another rival battle, and this time Blue's team is quite wild, but I think I have a plan. Against his Pidgeotto, I lead with Brett again for Intimidate, and this time we actually land our Rock Slide, doing huge damage, as his wing attack hardly does anything, and then another knocks him out. In comes Execute, and Bite nails him hard to half, and gets the flinch, so another brings him to just a sliver, and he flinches again. Brett, you are a savage, but in comes Alakazam next. Thankfully though, not only does our jolly nature allow us to outspeed, but we flinch him with bite, then hit him again before he just uses future sight, as at this point that's the only psychic move he has, fortunately enough for us. So a final attack does the job. Then in comes the bane of our existence, Gyarados. But now we have the perfect counter. Shirley, who despite taking the future sight and a few attacks from it, ends up with a quarter health left with the help of Leech Seed and Sleep Powder too. This baits in his now fully evolved Charizard as planned, and now we have the perfect counter for this thing too, Eric, who eats up flamethrower and wing attack like a madman and takes him down in two surfs to win us the battle. Not bad at all, this team is definitely coming together. The final rocket boss is none other than Giovanni, and Eric's work is not done yet. Since his Nidorino lead can't hurt us much, I decide to load up on Barrier to raise our defense. From there, I could spam Surf repeatedly and take down his entire team, as it was super effective on most of them, and the Pokemon that could hit us in turn didn't do much with our increased defenses. Wait a minute, the president said thank you for saving Sylph. You're thanking me for saving myself? What? We from the president down are indebted to you. Oh. Maybe I'm in a time loop, and this is how I took over the company in the first place. It all makes sense now. Well, it's time for the scariest gym of all, Saffron City. A psychic one. The trainers themselves were quite manageable with the help of Richie and Shadow Punch, but the gym leader, Sabrina, might be another matter entirely. After picking up the Shadow Ball TM from the game corner for additional power and EV training Richie's speed to the max, let's hope my calculations are correct. The one good thing being that Ghost being physical actually kind of helps here, as her Pokemon are quite specially defensive. As planned, both her Kadabra and Mr. Mime are one-hit KOs with a supercharged Shadow Ball, but then in comes her Alakazam. It all depends if we can outspeed as I calculated, and we do, eliminating one of the biggest threats in the entire game. Oh. From there, her Venomoth survived one, then confused us, we proceeded to hit ourselves in confusion and get hit by Psybeam down below half, so switching was necessary. But it turns out Eric has the bulk to tank her attack and finish her off with a final surf. Damn. 
Looking ahead, after this battle, I decide to bring on our newly caught Matt on the team in place of Venusaur, and he quickly evolves into a beastly, impish wheezing which I can't wait to use. Cinnabar Island is our next destination, and we have to hit up the Pokemon Mansion for our final encounter of the run, this time a Grimer, which I catch and nickname Rocket, and who has a rash plus special attack and minus special defense nature, which is meh. The Cinnabar Island gym is upon us, and I found it hilarious how I had sent out Eric against a trainer I didn't know was named Super nerd Eric. Eric versus Eric, showdown of the century. Before the gym leader, I had gone back to Route 12 to pick up what I think will be a perfect TM, Rain Dance, which I teach to Eric and also give him the leftovers for recovery. The seventh gym leader is Blaine, the fire type specialist, and he leads with a Growlithe, which gives me the perfect opportunity to set up the rain. Not only does this weaken his fire moves, but it also supercharges our surf to the point that we can now one-hit KO every single one of his Pokemon. And of course, his Arcanize Intimidate is of no concern to us, so we win the battle handily for our 7th badge. Go Eric, go! With no more roadblocks, we can hit up the 8th and final gym right away in Viridian City, before which I replaced Devio with Shirley. The 8th gym leader is Giovanni, the ground type expert, and as scary as that type is for our team, I think we have a good shot at this. He leads with a Rhyhorn, and I lead with Shirley. Razor Leaf annihilates that thing in one hit, and in comes... Yup, another Rhyhorn. Bye bye! Go! In comes a bigger threat, Dugtrio, and it outspeeds and nails us right to half with a critical hit Earthquake before we smash it as well. In comes his Nidoqueen next, and an Earthquake crit from that thing would definitely end us, so I switch into Matt for the Levitate prediction, which works well. With our massive defense, Leftover's recovery, and him being forced into Body Slam, I can repeatedly smash him with Shadow Ball that I taught via TM to eventually get the KO. And of course, his Nidoking is the exact same story, being completely walled by Matt until he met his end. Let's go! All 8 badges down, and a wicked variety of Pokemon to work with. Speaking of which, I decide it's best at this point to replace Matt with Rocket our Grimer. After leveling him enough to get him to learn Sludge Bomb, I then let him evolve into a Muck, yet another bulky threat that I think will be much needed moving forward. Heading to our final destination, we're stopped by Blue on Route 22 for another battle, but thankfully for this one we can use the League's level cap and overlevel him a bit. His Pidgeot was handled the same way as last time with our perfect counter, Brett, before... in comes his Alakazam, this time with a fully powered Psychic. But, we now maybe have something that can take it. Rocket, who I switched in with massive special defense. He eats up two in a row on just 30 HP before leftovers, then we can land a sludge bomb, and we indeed have enough power to one hit KO it since it's a physical move. Wow. Bullet dodged. His Rhyhorn was then handled by a switch into Ricky with Dig, then baiting in the Gyarados allowed us to switch into Shirley to handle it the same way as last time as well. Then in comes his Charizard, and I was like, woo, we have a perfect perfect counter with Eric again, but all of a sudden he crits us with wing attack low before we're able to knock him out. Oh no. I have nothing that can tank a wing attack and a flamethrower combo, so I'm forced to stay in, and Eric the Legend tanks wing attack on just 20 HP to edge him out. Sheesh. His final Pokemon is then Execute, unevolved thankfully, so a switch into Richie is able to save us all even through paralysis, nailing him with a final Shadow Ball. Entering the Pokemon League gate is always epic, but I realized something this time. This is kind of a perfect metaphor for tax dollars. They have eight government employees, each checking a badge of ours. They could have just had one dude check all eight of them. Ah, uh, too good. Entering Victory Road brings us to a long, perilous quest through, and I love how they replaced the legendary Pokemon Moltres with a guard spec. <laughs> Making our way to the other side, we've arrived at our final destination, the Pokemon League. But as I alluded to at the start, something is different. That's right, this time we'll be facing the harder Elite Four rematch teams from the get-go, adding the ultimate challenge to the end of the game. After much grinding, fulfilling the rest of our AVs, and getting any remaining TMs and items that we need, it's time for the ultimate Kanto Elite Four showdown. The first Elite Four member is Lorelei, the Ice-type expert. Theory crafting for her team took a while, but I think there's only one real answer, and it's a weird one on the face of it. But given that she leads with a part Water-type Dugong, I send out Shirley with the Miracle Seed attached. Giga Drain brings her to a quarter immediately, then she just goes for double team, so I see the perfect opportunity to put her to sleep. 
Now I take the risk and go for growth, then I can take her down on the next turn. From here, with a stab super effective plus one miracle seed boosted Giga Drain, I can one hit KO her Cloister and do huge damage on her Lapras even, but it survives in the red and lands an Ice Beam for huge damage on us. After she heals though, another two do the job and give us full recovery. Her Piloswine being part ground then goes down to a single hit as well, and in comes a big threat, Jinx. She outspeeds right away and puts us to sleep too, so we are not in a good position. Ice Beam then slams us below half, and we stay asleep. Not good. I'm forced to switch, so hoping to bait the Ice Beam, I go into Rocket, and we did. Nice. She then lands a super effective Psychic, but Rocket tanks it on a third and can land a Mega Power Sludge Bomb for the victory. Wow. These teams are looking tough. The second Elite Four member is Bruno, the fighting type expert. His rematch team is wild, and unfortunately he has Steelixes instead of Onyx, so I'm forced to go in with Ricky, who I taught the Earthquake TM2 from Giovanni, which only does two-thirds before Rock Tomb drops our speed. Another takes him down though before Hitmonlee then comes in. Anticipating either a fighting or ground move, I switch in Richie, and it was the Earthquake, so Levitate makes us immune, and I slam him with Psychic from Saffron, but it just barely doesn't KO, and he hits us with Rock Slide to half. He just healed though, so I hit him again to a sliver, and then he preemptively switches out of nowhere into another Steelix. Goodness gracious. I have no choice, so I send in Eric, and thankfully he went for Iron Tail, not Earthquake, so a surf from there did him in. Hitmonlee then came back out, but Eric outsped him for the easy KO, and then in comes Machamp. And of course, this thing has Earthquake too, so I switch in Richie to bait it, but he went for Rock Slide out of nowhere, but Richie survives on 17 HP. Man oh man. I now switch in Brett to get the Intimidate to help us, but I can't paralyze him as he has the Guts ability. So I go into Shirley to tank an Earthquake well, then land a Leech Seed and proceed to stall him out from there with recovery from Giga Drain and Leech Seed combined. His final Pokemon is Hitmonchan, and fortunately Shirley is able to duke it out with him too, being left with below half after finishing him with the final attack. That is the most I remember struggling with Bruno in a while. The third Elite Four member is Agatha, the ghost type expert, and her team is incredibly tricky despite seeming easy on the face of it. She leaves with a Gengar, so I send out our own Gengar with the Twisted Spoon attached for the immediate outspeed and KO with Stab Super Effective Shadow Ball. Mischievous then comes in and suffers the same fate immediately. So far, so good. Crobat then comes in though, and amazingly we do outspeed it with Psychic, but just barely don't KO in the red before she lands a Confuse Ray. Not good at all. But I have to go for it as I know she'll heal here, and we do land one through Confusion. I go for another hoping to finish her, but we hit ourselves in Confusion, and then she lands a Shadow Ball of all things, and we survive in the red. Damn it, my whole plan is shattered. I switch into Eric, who tanks two air cutters with the help of the leftovers before nailing it with Ice Beam. In comes Arbok next, and I switch into Ricky here, and thankfully she didn't go for Earthquake, so we can hit an Earthquake of our own to KO. Her final Pokemon is a wild level 70 Gengar, and I have like no way to hurt it as I was hoping to have Richie out there in the first place. So I switch in Rocket, anticipating the Psychic, which she does go for and hits us hard for a third after Leftovers. Another one then hits us to a quarter, but I land the Disable. Whew. Her scariest move is gone for now. Knowing her remaining move pool, I go into Brett to intimidate her Shadow Ball, which does little now. Then I can bite for little damage, but the flinch, but then her disable wears off. Yikes. I switch into Shirley now, but Psychic does over half and gets the special defense drop. Oh no. I sent in Eric to see what he could do, but nope, way too much damage. Then I send in Ricky, but also way too much. At this point, I have no other choice. I have to sack something on our team, so I go with Brett, who immediately gets slaughtered upon impact. That sacrifice saves the day though, as I can now send in our own Gengar, who can outspeed and revenge kill with the Shadow Ball for the win. The last Elite Four member is Lance, the Dragon Master, and I am terrified of his supercharged rematch team, especially after losing a Mon already, and an Intimidate one at that. After theorycrafting the best I can, it's time to go for it. He leaves with a Gyarados, so I send out Ricky, who I taught the Thunderbolt TM to, and we outspeed and nail it with its 4 times super effectiveness for the one hit KO. A good start, but in comes Kingdra next. Here I switch in Rocket, and he just went for a Dragon Dance. He then went for it again before I land a Toxic, which I just taught him. 
With him on a timer and repeatedly dragon dancing still, I hit a sludge bomb for a surprisingly large amount of damage, so we tank one surf before taking him down. Rocket's pulling these off quite well. In comes a huge threat though, Dragonite with Earthquake. I switch in Richie here for Levitate, and it works. Now knowing he'll go for something else, I can safely switch in Eric, and he went for Flamethrower. Perfect. But he did get the burn. However, I can outspeed with a 4 times damage Ice Beam for the immediate knockout. Aerodactyl then comes out, and after getting hit with Aerial Ice Low, we can land a stab super effective Surf, but he barely survives it on a sliver. No! Everything is ruined. Knowing he'll heal, I go for another, but he survives in the red again as we're brought to the red by our burn. I have to switch, so I go into Rocket as he heals again, which I wasn't expecting, and then we get nailed hard by Hyper Beam to below half. And then, we miss Toxic. Are you kidding me? Knowing he has to recharge though, I go into Ricky freely, then he slams us with another to half before two consecutive Ice Beams do the job. In comes his final Pokemon though, a level 72 Dragonite. Oh boy. It all comes down to this as I go for the 4 times super effective Ice Beam outspeed, but he barely survives in the red and ends Ricky's existence with an Ice Beam crit of his own. Ouch, that's painful. Thankfully, we do have Richie who can outspeed though and take him down with a final Shadow Ball to win the battle. And what a crazy one it was. Well, it's time. The final battle against the champion of the Indigo Plateau, our very own rival, Blue, with his ultimate rematch team. With just four Pokemon left, I am not liking the looks of this, but strategizing the best I can, let's go for it. He leads with a Heracross, so I send out Richie. Psychic hits him hard, very low, then he hits a Rock Tomb of all things to drop our speed. Why? Now I'm forced to switch, so I go into Rocket as he heals. Baiting the Earthquake, I go back into Richie, and he went for Counter anyway. Knowing I need to risk it, I go for Hypnosis, and we hit it, allowing us to land two consecutive Psychics freely for the KO. In comes another big threat next, Executor, and we don't quite have the power to get this done with a physical Shadow Ball, so I switch in Rocket. But even with our Barry, we can't tank two Psychics, so I have no choice as another one devastates us. Oh, this is not good. Here I switch in Eric to hit him with Ice Beam to a third, then Psychic nails us to a third as well. We do outspeed though, so another takes him down. In comes Charizard next, and we can outspeed it with Surf, but it barely survives in the red too. Why is everything doing that? As Earthquake then destroys Eric. And a crit to add insult to injury, of course. I know we now just need to outspeed though, so I can send in Richie for another revenge kill even after his Citrus Berry. Alakazam then comes out, and this is a great position to be in as we can now outspeed and take him down with Shadow Ball instantly. But then, in comes an absolute monster, Tyranitar of all things. My hands are tied here, so I just go for Confuse Ray on him, not wanting to risk the Hypnosis miss, and he hits himself in Confusion. Huh, I didn't think I'd get this far to be honest, so I go for Hypnosis here, and we miss it now. Of course, then he snaps out of confusion right away and pulverizes Richie with a crunch. Why, why is our luck this way? From here though, I can send in Shirley who can take him down in two Giga Drains, and after an Aerial Ice combined with Sandstorm damage, we have a quarter damage on us even through Giga Drain and Leftovers recovery. In comes his final Pokemon, Gyarados, a Pokemon Shirley has a lot of experience dealing with, and he goes for Dragon Dance as... We miss Leech Seed. No, why, why is the universe designed this way? He then hits us hard with Earthquake to 69 HP, nice, as Giga Drain brings him to a third. We can survive an Earthquake and we just need one last attack, but out of nowhere he unleashes an unholy plus one Hyper Beam to eviscerate Shirley and end our hopes and dreams. What an unlucky end, but you know what? I'm proud of our team making it this far through the hardest version of the Elite Four. We didn't quite get the victory, just off in fact, but I'd say our MVP is either going to be Richie, Rocket, or Eric to be honest, as they kind of saved us in many situations that would have otherwise swept our team. But our whole roster put in work for sure. As always, make sure to subscribe to join the Self Army and get us to a quarter million, and I'll see you guys next time for another challenge video.